Um, but let's just go over to talk about Just Stop Oil for a second and the revelation actually that the police have actually arrested six Just Stop Oil protesters before they caused disruption. Wow, what's going on? Um, well, Stephen Barrett, who's a barrister and writer and knows everything there is to know about the law, um, will explain to us what's happened. Uh, and also my, my question will be to Stephen, uh, why on earth these protesters otherwise keep getting off? Stephen, thanks for joining me. No, it's a it's a pleasure. <clears throat> uh, and um, yeah, so let, let, let's do the first question first. Uh, what happened here, insofar as the police uh, arresting in anticipation of a problem? I, I, I mean, I'm not suggesting for a second that you're party to all of that intelligence, Stephen, connected as you are. Um, but but uh, can you fill in some context on this story? Well, they've always been able to act, and that's something to really you know mull over now. They are finally taking action, but for a very long time, the police have had an awful lot of powers that they have simply refused to use. And what they're doing now seems revolutionary, but it's, it's simply what they should have done all along. It's their job to keep us all safe and to maintain law and order. And they've got a whole plethora of, of legal skills and, and abilities, and they're finally rediscovering them. I mean, that if you like law and order, then that's the thing to celebrate. I, I thought the police were just there, Stephen, to give us crime reference numbers after a crime has been committed. No? Are they there actually for prevention? I had no well, idea. Well, I think... I think we are rightfully, or you are rightfully... Cynical. Um, or or justifi just justifiably tweaking their tail here. Yes. Um, it, it's not... I, I have not uh, pulled back from, from publicly criticising them for failing to act. Um, I suppose the, the uh, opposite of that is that now that they have acted, we ought to praise and, and laud them. Yes. But at should. the end of the day, we, we do pay them. So finally discovering that they can do the job we pay them to do is, is, is not necessarily the greatest achievement in the world. Yes, and Stephen, I don't know what they were arrested for. I don't know what the charge would be. I mean, it would be some kind of conspiracy to do something or other, presumably, would it? Yes, and we mustn't discuss too much whenever anybody is immediately arrested. One of the oddest things well, we're not naming about names, public life... For sure. we're not well, exactly, names, yeah. exactly. And we, none of us would ever want, you wouldn't want, I would never want to risk any le legitimate legal process. We must, we must le leave that free, so we, we don't talk about specifics. But we know that a lot has been going on, frankly, that the police have tolerated far too much. Yes. So given that we pay them to do a job, they, they really ought to have intervened a lot more than they have done. It's great in that they're finally rediscovering the job that we pay them to do. But, you know, listeners should know that, that we have paid them throughout the entire process. Yes. So, you know, if I, if I pay a gardener for a year and a half and he, and, and he or she only decides to start weeding 18 months in, why have I paid the gardener for, for 18 months? Yes, you know, no, no, it, it should be about prevention and deterrence as much as it is about detection, for sure. Um, and, and, and Stephen, talk to us about, though, the... the, the uh, the revelation that a lot of these protesters that are then arrested, presumably for criminal damage, are then taken through the judicial system. And in recent days, certainly recent weeks, there have been a number of instances where either a judge or juries have let those protesters off. I mean, they've walked, either because no evidence is presented by the Crown Prosecution Service or because that judge or jury decides that actually covering a bank in orange paint or vandalising a sports car or uh, vandalising uh, Stonehenge etc is actually protest rather than damage how on earth does that happen well so what's going on there is that there is a delay process okay so um many of the recent events have yet to go through the courts um and what we're talking about is is really historic the judges are not at fault so the judges have have been useful the judges have clarified things one of our top judges is the lady chief justice and the lady chief justice has clarified that criminal damage is always bad you can't you can't just commit criminal damage and then say oh i was protesting and she you know she she stepped up to the plate there she's done her job she, she has clarified that as as law we do have to look to ourselves because quite a lot of the time it's the public. When we sit on juries as the public, we have been letting them off. And that, that's something for listeners to discuss and debate, but that's not lawyers doing that. That's not judges doing that. That's the 
public letting them off. If, if it's a jury. Do, do you think that we should invoke terrorist, a terrorist charge type approach to Just Stop All? Because someone's going to get hurt or killed, aren't they, eventually? We have to look again at certain words like terrorist. We have to consider the idea that there might be domestic terrorists. One of the oddest things over the last 20 years is that there's been a sort of highbrow campaign against the idea of things like treason. You know, there's people from from my sort of group have have, have sneered at the idea that that there are there are bad actors against the state, but there clearly are bad actors against the state, and yes. we're, we're just going to have to rediscover these. I, ideas. I think we potentially need to redefine uh, what we what we mean by uh, yes uh, our approach to these uh, these terrorists, as many people say they are.